Hello. Okay, so I'm gonna be going over a deadlift tutorial. I know there is one already on this page, but um, this one is going to show a little bit more with deadlift because there is just so much that goes into it, as well as kind of showing it with weight before I was just kind of showing the form in general with just an empty bar. So now I have some weight on here, it's 135 pounds. Um, so before you ever start deadlifting, um, make sure that you have your form right. So go ahead and look at that other video where I do go over form with the empty bar. And then once you're ready to kind of start increasing the weight on it, um, you definitely never wanna lift cold ever. Spend two, three, four, five minutes um, warming up your muscles in some capacity, whether that's treadmill, running, incline walk, jump rope, um, Stairmaster, bike, elliptical, anything just to kind of get your muscles warm, your blood pumping, just feeling a little bit of heat um, to get your muscles a little bit more kind of plastic so they're better to eat and easier to move and you don't want to hurt yourself. You should never lift cold. So just a little bit of warming up. You don't have to do a half an hour of cardio or anything like that. Just a little bit. And then um, starting light. You're never going to go straight to the heaviest weight or even like a couple 20 pounds below your heaviest weight you definitely want to work up i always do a couple with the bar just to kind of get my form in and then i'll throw either maybe 95 or 135 on the bar do a couple there and then go up to my max my max right now is low 200s just to kind of reference um, where i'm at but if you're working up to like 95 135 i would do the bar then maybe 65 85 and then 95 or bar 65, 95, 135. So just kind of slowly work yourself. There. You don't have to do a ton of sets. Um, one set of three, four um, reps and then go into your heavier weight. So I'm gonna kind of go over some different things that you wanna make sure you're doing and not doing when you are deadlifting with some decent weight. These should be um, harder reps where maybe at most you're doing like 10 at most, I would say, but this might be for like the heavier weight, maybe in the like five to 10 range, six to 10 range, okay? So um, same as when I was showing you with the video with the empty bar, you're gonna line your feet up about hip width apart, maybe a little bit narrower. Um, everyone's a little different with kind of how this feels and it's gonna depend on the length of your legs too and your torso and just how your body is kind of split up. So I usually do about hip width. Um, I usually go right inside kind of where the bar is um, smooth and then it goes to that rough part. So I do usually right inside there because I grab right on the edge of the knurling. So if you can see, this is the um, smooth part and then the rough part starts right here. So I usually place my hands here. Um, I'm, I will maybe throw some straps on, but for right now, since I'm not doing a ton of reps, I can do it without straps. And so I'm just gonna do it plain, both overhand. If you don't have straps and you wanna do over under, just make sure that you're always kind of changing so you don't um, wear your muscles in the same way and get into a bad movement pattern. So I'm gonna go overhand, make sure your hands are even on the bar. So I place my thumbs right on the edge of the knurling, the rough part, and grab over. I make sure the bar is close to my shins. I'm basically touching my shins. And you wanna think you're gonna scrape the bar up your legs. So you'll see a lot of big heavy deadlifters wear high socks or long pants because you, you can really scrape the bar up your legs and get some nasty marks there because that's really, you wanna move it in the um, shortest, uh, what's, what am I looking for? The, the shortest point between the ground and standing up is gonna be closest to your body. You don't wanna start from out here because that's a longer point, so you wanna have it close to your body. And you wanna make sure you're starting off with your core brace, so act like someone's getting ready to punch you in the stomach the whole time. You don't wanna take a, a huge breath in because then you don't have enough kind of pressure and it's more up here than down here. So just like kind of half breath, really make sure you're solid here, come down, Line up your hands, lean back, because you want, you don't want the weight in your heels, but you want to be kind of driving through your feet and you want to make sure that you're kind of pulling up and back. I don't want you to think of it as a back exercise. Think of it as a hips moving back, hips moving forward, or butt moving back to the wall, hips driving forward on the way up, okay? 
So go ahead, grab really close to your shins. Um, head nice and neutral. You don't want it up. You don't want it tucked down. Just neutral and make sure it stays that way. And you're just going to really, the motion is pushing the hips forward. That is what pushes you up, okay? So grab, make sure you're nice and tight. Hips forward on the way down, hips back. And it should go down nice and even. If you feel like it goes down and one side is always hitting on the other side, or one side is always hitting first, it's because your hands aren't even. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. Hands down, nice and even, feet forward. Plant your feet firmly into the ground, butt back, lats pulled into our back pockets. You wanna make sure you're kind of pushing your lats down or reaching to the ground, okay? So that's how you engage your lats just for stability and then you want to think so my butt is back and now I'm going to bring my hips forward that is the whole movement hips forward butt back hips forward butt back hips forward okay so that's the basic movement you shouldn't feel it in your shoulders you shouldn't feel it in your lower back so with that being said you're not using your lower back to do the lift, but your lower back and all the muscles in your back are involved. So all the way right here is a muscle called the erector spinae. And it is a big muscle. It runs literally all the way down your back. And on either side of your vertebrae, it's a muscle. It gets worked like anything else does. And so when that is under tension and it is making sure you're spine isn't doing this under the under the weight of the bar it's going to get worked it's going to feel sore it's hard sometimes to know especially if you haven't felt it before what's back pain and what's just those muscles being sore a lot of times my back muscles do get sore after i do a deadlift or some movements because i do have i have to lift really heavy in order to really challenge my glutes because my glutes are more developed than a lot of other parts of my body. Um, so a lot of times the ones that are a little bit more underdeveloped are gonna feel it more or you're going to feel it more there. So it's okay if your back is sore, um, if you're doing it right. If you're not doing it right, then obviously you can get hurt. And then one thing I want you to be aware of is that you're not trying to drive up with your chest or your shoulders. That's not how you're picking up. You're picking it up with your glutes. So when you're in this position and you're down and you're grabbing the bar, these muscles should come together to help you stand. And you don't want to end like this. This is not safe for anything. You're going to stand up and end here. Strong, strong. Okay. Lats should be packed down into your back pockets to help kind of everything stabilize and just help kind of engage the movement. So we're gonna do it a couple more times. So feet hip width apart, hands down, make sure they're even, nice against your, um, your shins. And you're going to ready, butt back, core tight, chin down and squeeze and driving the hips forward. Pulling the hips back, down, squeeze and driving them forward. Pulling them back, squeeze and driving them forward. Another thing we can kind of address is, just like with squatting, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to your knees. It's not as big of a knee bend, so a lot of times we're not thinking about our knees in this position, but you're obviously not locking your legs out. That's just terrible. Yes, you feel it in your hamstrings, but, oh my God, I can't even imagine what that would do for your knees. So there is a slight knee bend and you wanna make sure they're not caving in. So just like on a squat, you wanna think strong knees, still following the uh, direction of your toes. And one way you can kind of help to make sure you're not letting your knees cave in is take a little bit of a wider stance or you could even bring your, um, bring your grip in a little bit closer than where you had it before. So if I'm keeping my hands where they were before, I'm gonna bring my feet out a little bit more, not a ton, and you're gonna see my arm, my knees pushing against 
my arms, okay? So that's kind of your cue to keep your knees going this way and not letting them go in as you come up. And if your knees are a little, or your feet are a little farther apart, it's kind of hard for your knees to cave in. So you can bring them a little further than hip width, so maybe more shoulder width. And you're gonna nestle them up right next to the inside of your elbows. And you're gonna, just like you did before, pull up on the slack so you can feel there's a little bit of space between the opening of the uh, plate and the barbell itself. So you wanna pull up on the slack first and have that be like almost like step zero and then pull from there, okay? So you kinda of do one and then up, okay? So down, pull up on the slack, and then lift. So down, pull the slack, and then lift. It's just a smoother movement if you do it that way when you already have the slack taken out. Okay, and then I believe I mentioned this in my other um, deadlifting video. When you are going heavier on your lifts, shoes are gonna be very, very, very important. So if you are serious about lifting and you want to start lifting heavier, you need to get flatter, more stable shoes. So this is how flat my shoe is. See, there's no cushion. I mean, there's some cushion on the inside, but it's not like cushioning my heel or anything like that. Like look how flat, no real like foam in here, like a running shoe. So you want something that is flat. A lifting shoe or cross trainer are great. You do not want running shoes. Some like basic Nikes are fine, but like even Converse are great. Um, Vans, I mean, if you're just lifting in those, those are great. Those can be kind of hard for other lifts and other things that you're doing in the gym. I really like, I've been a Reebok girl for ever since I've worked in the gym. These are Reebok Nanos. Um, I forget what number they are. I think these are 1X. Like 100 bucks on Amazon, anywhere from like 100 to 130. Um, Reebok always does sales online. There's always like 20, 30% off. And they run great deals around the holidays. Nike, Nike Metcons are another great one. Um, and I really like more of the cross trainery shoe, like a Reebok or a Nike Metcon because you can still run and jump and you don't feel like you have zero support in them versus like a straight up lifting shoe or something that's very, very minimal. And your feet are gonna get a little bit more tired. So this is a nice compromise between like a shoe that is still comfortable and you can do a bunch of stuff with and it being too cushy because if it's too cushy, like a running shoe, you have all this stuff underneath an extra 100 to 200 pounds that you're having to kind of work against. So you wanna make sure that you are on a flat, stable surface. That's why barefoot lifting is a thing, but if you're not used to it and your feet aren't strong enough, you should not be doing barefoot lifting. Um, and a lot of gyms won't even let you because it's dangerous. If you drop something, your foot is gone. Um, so I definitely recommend getting a flatter lifting shoe. Like I said, Reebok Nanos are my go-to. Um, Reebok Nanos. Yes, that's what they are. And then Nike Metcons are another really good one. Uh, Noble is also a really good brand. Those are like 100 to 150 bucks. Um, but I hear nothing but good things about them. Um, but yeah, so that's my little tutorial on deadlifting with more weight on the bar, kind of what to pay attention to. So just to kind of take you all the way back through, ignore my one untight shoe. So feet about hip to shoulder width apart. I like them in between the uh, the two neural parts. So there's neural in the middle and there's neural on the side. I like them right in the middle, hip width apart, feet facing forward, hands down evenly on the bar. You're going to um, engage your core. So small inhale, get ready for that punch in the stomach, butt back, shoulders, hold down, chest, not up, but neutral. Think about holding a tennis ball or ball under your chin the whole time. Pull up on the slack, hips forward, hips back. Hips drive forward, hips go back. 
and that is it. It's simple. Once you get used to it, you're not gonna think about it at all, but it's definitely important to get the movement pattern down. So practice with an empty bar, practice with lighter weight, practice with a broomstick, ask your coach, videotape yourself. Super, super important. You don't wanna hurt yourself on this, but if you're doing it right, you won't hurt yourself. You'll be sore, but you won't hurt yourself. So don't be afraid of deadlifts. They're amazing. And it's going to just help you do everything else so much easier as well. So hope you enjoy.